My name is Dr. Martin Gorman, practicing in Encino, California, and we're here to discuss today part of the uh, examination process we go through when we treat our patients with uh, TMD symptoms or headache, facial pain, or sleep or sleep issues. First thing we do is we do an exam on the patient themselves, and then we move on and educate our patients to understand what we do, what we may do, and what their issues are, and how we're going to treat them. One of the things that we show is this. Uh, dinar board and it uh, teaches about TMJ. We have the elastics which are the muscles and then we have the teeth down here and right here we have the the jawbone which right here which fits in the base of the skull. When we have a normal tooth relationship this is the normal jig and when it's in and you open and close the teeth come together nice and smoothly and there's no interferences and the muscles work the way they're meant to work biologically. And in this position, you notice the jawbone that's at the base of the skull is in the up and forward position in the socket up against the green cartilage. In this instance, it's green so you can see it. Obviously, it's not green anatomically. So we're going to replace that normal jig with the posterior bite issue because that's what 90% of the people have that, that issue. So when you go to close, the back teeth hit first. but the brain doesn't want to bang and hurt you, so what it does, it tells the muscles here to move the entire jaw and all the lower teeth so they fit with the upper teeth as smoothly as possible. But what happens is the jawbone goes down and back, puts strain on the muscles, and that little hole right there is actually your ear hole right here. And with that jawbone going down and back, it, it changes the pressure gradients, the airflow in the ear, and that's why people get dizziness, cloudiness, ringing, etc., in their ears. Now I'm going to show you what we what we showed on the dinar board, the position of the condyle, and, and what a normal jaw position looks like here. Here's a picture here of a jawbone at the base of the skull. Here's the brain up here. Here's the socket, and here's the the jawbone in the socket and you can see how irregular shape and the form of it is and it's just sitting in a and the space here is larger here than in the back which means the jawbone itself is down and back which is indicative of a posterior bite issue so by getting these pictures and, and doing the exam process we actually are finding out what the cause and, and things that are incorrect in your system. Now if I go to this next picture here, this is health. You look at this picture down here, you can see the space in the front of the jawbone is smaller than the space behind the jawbone. And that says the jawbone is up and forward, which is the really ideal position anatomically and biologically. And in this picture you can see this black circle here, that is the airway, your ear hole and it shows how close it is and then when the jawbone is back it can put pressure on that and change and cause different symptoms. So healthy and if I go to the other side of this same patient it's the same thing. You can easily see the space behind the jawbone is definitely larger than the space right here is smaller which it shows that the jawbone is up and forward is in its healthy anatomic position and when the jawbone is in a healthy anatomic position here the muscles are lined up in their natural, biologic, healthy positions, okay? And then everything should work much, much better. In order to confirm whether this is your problem or not, what we do is we take a three-dimensional x-ray. When we review the x-ray, what we do is we have, for example, this picture here, and this is the view from the top of your head looking down. Here's your dental arch here and then here is your pharyngeal airway and when I measure this pharyngeal airway here it's over 35 millimeters wide anything around 25 is really good this 35 is fabulous tremendous airway from left to right now as we move on to other pictures here is a lateral view looking from the side here are the front teeth here's the roof of the mouth the hard bone here's the soft part soft palate and here are some measurements here this is over 13 millimeters here this is over 16 millimeters here 
anything ten or greater is really good. So I'm showing you pictures here that are really obviously excellent so you can really see the difference between what's healthy and what is unhealthy. Now as we move here we see this picture and you can see that lateral view of the airway this measurement is 3.7, 2.0, 3.5 and then it gets to be 7.7 .7 down here. But obviously that's very very small. You take in a lot of air through your nose and they have this big space here for air and then all of a sudden it's like driving on a freeway. You're going from five lanes down to one or two, it gets all backed up. So you're not getting the air you need to, to, for your system to replenish even during the day and, and, and at night it, it, it's worse because these are obviously awake pictures. So at night your airways are even smaller than this and that's when you get blockages and you get issues with breathing and apneas and your body just doesn't heal well. Other thing to look at here, here is a picture of the nasal complex looking straight ahead. These are the eyes and these are your nose and you can see here these airways are gigantic right here. Large, large, large airways which is really good so when you breathe through your nose the air can be filtered, humidified and temperature controlled so when your air goes into your lungs it is really good, clean, healthy air to deal with. If you breathe through your mouth it bypasses the entire nasal filtering system and dirty air gets into your lungs. Number one. Number two, if you still have tonsils, the air actually irritates your tonsils and can swell them which further blocks the airways and even blocks your uh, swallowing ability because the food can't get past them easily and you have difficulty swallowing sometimes. So it's really important to, to breathe your nose correctly.